Now we're ready to start coding the next part of our game. Before we go any further, we need to do something called initialization. If we're going to make this character interact with the walls of the maze, and the baddie, and introduce levels, and maybe a time, then we need to start thinking about how that all gets set up, and how it looks at the start of the game. Initialization is something that happens right at the beginning, and you can have a separate bit of code for that in each character, in each sprite, in each backdrop, um, so that you can make sure that that sprite starts where you want it to and acts the way you want it to, and all of the variables are set just as they need to be. So we're going to do a quick bit of initialization, even though we've already written the code for our explorer to move around, we're just going to put that to one side, I'm just going to click and drag on this white bit here to put that to one side. There we go. And I'm going to start making a new bit of code here. Now this initialization happens right at the start. So again, I'm going to have when the green flag is clicked. The first thing I want to happen when the green flag is clicked is I want my sprite to start off down here at the starting point. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the motion blocks and you will see there is one called go to x y these are coordinates an x coordinate and a y coordinate now you can see that at the moment my explorer is at x 45 and y minus 32 what's really interesting is if i move my explorer around just by clicking on it when i let go you will see that the x coordinate and the y coordinate have changed in my sprite window, but also in the coding block. That makes it so easy because all I have to do to make sure that my sprite starts here is to drag it here. The numbers and coordinates in the block change and I can just drag that block in. Now, wherever my sprite is, on the screen, all I have to do is click the green flag and it should start back here again. If I want it to be pointing up, ready to go up, then all I do is simply drag in my point in direction, just like in my arrow key code, and I make sure that it's pointing up. So let's just try that. Here goes my sprite, he's over here, he's over there. I press the green flag and he's back at the start, facing the right way. Other things that happen to ha have to happen in initialization is where you've got variables. Now we noted down some variables in our plan. So we need to make those variables within Scratch. Um, in other programming languages, you would have to declare those variables and then assign them. The way to declare a variable in Scratch is simply to make it. So we're going to make a variable now and we're going to choose the ones that we've got on our plan. Now I had on my plan lives. So I'm going to add lives in there. And I'm going to say it's for all sprites. All sprites have access to this variable because I might want this variable to change something in one of the other sprites or a background too. So I'm going to leave it on all sprites. I'm click OK. And I also need to make my variable score. Again for all sprites and I also need to make a variable level to tell me what level I'm on. And finally, time. So now I've got four variables that I've made up. Now just for confusion, I can get rid of the default my variable one by just cl right clicking on it and pressing delete the my variable variable. So I've just got mine there. Now as you can see, they've now appeared on the screen. Now I don't really want them to look like that and I don't want them to be there. Maybe I want the time one, but I don't want it necessarily right there. I can click and drag it. And if I right click, I can change it as well to a different readout. So a large readout, for example, and that could show the time as my character, uh, my sprite is going through the maze.
If I don't want these to show, for example, the number of lives I've got or the score or the level, I simply untick the checkbox in the variables. So I can take off score, I can take off lives, and I can take off level. Some of them you might want to show. Lives would be a good one to show, for example. And you could have that up there and just leave it up there as long as you've got enough space for the character to squeeze around. Now the sprite won't, won't actually interact with that box. It should just go straight underneath it. Yep, yeah, there we go. So no problem having that there. But in the initialization part of the code, I need to make sure that these variables are set at what they need to be. And the way I do that, and this is called assigning the variable, I drag in the set piece of code, the block, and I add those, let's add four of those because I've got four variables. Set level, well, I'm gonna start on level one, so I'm gonna set level to one. Set my lives, I'm gonna start with three lives. And then set my score, or I'm gonna start off with a score of zero. And the time, Ooh, let's say if I wanted a minute, I could start off with 60 seconds. There we go. And this is all about initialization. Another thing that I might have in here is what my backdrop should start off as. Now, we're going to start looking at an introductory backdrop later, so I'm not going to put the backdrop in here just now. Um, but if I did want to set that, it would be in looks, and I would have to find switch backdrop to and I would drag that piece of code in there, that block in, to make sure it started off on the right backdrop. And that is very important, it's called initialization, and you should have something like this in every single sprite to make sure that it starts off in the right place, and it's pointing in the right place, and it's now ready to go.